हेलो एंड वेलकम दिस इज़ प्रोफेसर विकास कटारिया एंड यू आर वाचिंग माय लेक्चर ऑफ ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम दिस इज लेक्चर नंबर फाइव इन द लास्ट लेक्चर वी हैड डिस्कस अबाउट मल्टी प्रोग्रामिंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम इन दिस लेक्चर आई एम कवरिंग द टॉपिक इज मल्टी प्रोसेसर ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम सो टुडे वी विल गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट सम मल्टी प्रोसेसर ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम लेट्स एवर लुक what kind of operating system it is multi processor operating system okay so there are basically two ways to increase the speed of computer system if we want to increase the speed of computer system we have two ways either we high speed components we have to embedded into the architecturally or we can increase the number of processor in one system right so first way by using high speed components architecturally such components tends to be very expensive right suppose we configure a uh, very expensive hardware so it may be very costly okay so our entire system become a very costly and that is not wishes for the person or human beings they intended that their very cheaply system should be there okay but the speed should be very high so let me define the multi processor system the need of multi processor system is being there are basically two ways to increase the speed of computer system first by using high speed components architecturally right and the second way by putting multiple processor inside the system or by introducing multi processor system which provide and appeal architecturing architecture alternative for improving performance of computer systems by coupling a number of low cost standard processor so the basic theme behind the multi processor is what we need to increase the speed of computer system so in order to achieve the speed of a computer system or is increase the speed of computer system the first way we can use the high component either we can use the high speed components that means we want to change the architecture of computer system high speed ram high speed buses high speed input output devices high speed processor right in the second way we can introduce the multi processor system that means we are appealing that we can improve the alternative performance of the computer system by putting more than one processor instead of number of low standard processor so just remove the low standard processor and put the high standard and high speed processor and try to try to put the number of processor inside one system right so multi processor as far as the name suggest we have multiple processor in one computer system and it is not mandatory we can have different computer system individually and each system have its one processor 
and all computer are connected to each other that can also form a multiprocessor operating system environment okay so there are basically two ways to increase the speed of computer system by using a high speed components that means we want to change into the architecture so we can is make the high speed and the second way by introducing multiprocessor system which provide an appealing architecture alternative for improving performance of computer system by coupling a number of low cost standard processor right now what we can do is multi processor system has more than one processor in close communication sharing and computer bus clock and sometimes memory also right so if we applying the concept of multi processor that means multi processor means more than one processor right so we can have more than one processor we can have more than one processor right every processor have its own local memory i mean i'm talking about the cache memory right and this processor can share can share computer buses computer clock and sometimes it can also share memory and devices right so we can have more than one processor that is the concept of multi processor system now suppose we have more than one processor then how individual processor will work every processor have its own local memory that means i'm talking about the cache memory every processor can share computer bus clock and sometime it can also share memory and devices so based on this classification the design issue for multi processor systems something like design of uh, sorry design issues for multi processor system the first is smp stand for symmetric multi processor multi processing right symmetric multi processing system let me clear in this each processor runs an identical copy of operating system right so suppose we have four processor we have four different system and every system has its own processor so every processor required identical copy of operating system it runs identical copy of operating system so we have four different copy of operating system because each processor intended to their own operating system right Be without operating system processor will not uh, understand how the take caring about the processes okay so smp means symmetric multi processing system in this each processor runs an identical copy of operating system and this copy communicate with another as needed second is a symmetrical multi processing or symmetric multi processing means in this each processor is assigned a specific task right a master processor controls the system the other processor either look of master for instruction or have predefined task okay so um is a symmetric multi processing that means again we have multiple processor but each processor assign a individual or a specific task there is one master processor which control all the processor 
and other processor either look of master for instruction or can have predefined task so as amp that means asymmetric multiprocessing have the concept of master and slave master is one kind of processor which control all the slave processor slave also uh, manage their own task but it always uh, uh, wait for the instruction from the master master uh, processor okay so it cannot do anything without the master instruction so it wait for the instruction coming from the master processor advantages of multi processor system advantages of multi processor system first is of course we have different we have number of processors so automatically we have again better throughput as compared to multi programming so increase system throughput i hope you get it i hope you get it by executing a number of different uh, user processes on different processors in parallelly what we are achieving we got better throughput from the multi processor system so we have we do not have a single processor over here we have multiple processor every processor have its own queue every processor executing their own jobs we have different processors we have several processor working in parallel manner so automatically the throughput will be increased second is application speed up application is speed up that means by executing some portion of application simultaneously okay so if we, if we have uh, different if we have multiple processor so we can assign multiple processor to a single application so that the entire application uh, managed by the various processor so the portion of the uh, portion of the application will take care by the processor the reason being application will be executed very speedily right that's why the application is speed up is also advantage of multi processing system now third is economic economy of scale it is clear that a multi processor system can save more than one more than single processor system suppose i am taking an example like we have one processor and we have one system right now suppose we want to create uh, such kind of architecture in which we have five system so we need a five processor individually right now this the cost of five system including all the peripheral devices situated into the motherboard is quite cheapest if we put five processor into a single system into a single motherboard okay that means we working on a cheap manner economically that is less costly okay so multi processor systems can save more than single processor system because we embedded multiple processor into single system that can also form a multi processing system it is not mandatory that every processor must have individual computer system we can embed it multiple processor into a single motherboard it will less economic right because they can share peripherals mass storage and power supplies also so economically it is big scale and less costly so economy of scale the biggest advantage of multi processing system is that is very fault tolerance 
let me clear the term fault tolerance if function can be distributed properly among several processors then failure of one processor will not hurt the entire system maybe it will be just slow but it will not damage the entire system okay suppose we have four system suppose we have single system having the four different processor so maybe possible certain in certain reason there is one processor will not work properly so it is it does it does not meaning it does not make any sense for various three processor they will work properly so if single processor gets damaged it will not affect to the other uh, processor other processor the rest of three processor will work properly this is called fault tolerance right so multi processing system have the fault tolerance okay it can manage if any one of the processor gets damaged or not work properly the load of damaged processor will be shared to other processor at the same time okay so maybe at that at that time it will be slow but it will not stop the executing of job it will not stop the execution okay so fault tolerance is the biggest advantage of multi processor system there is also disadvantage of multi processor system the first is the speed up ratio with n processor is not actually the n suppose we have five processor each processor have its own speed the total speed of the five processor at the resultant we actually not getting the actual speed of five processor right because when multiple processors corporate on a task or a certain amount of overhead is anchored in keeping all the parts working correctly this overhead plus contention for shared resources lowers the expected gain from the additional processes right so the speed of the speed up ratio with n processor is not exactly n rather it is less than n okay so yadi humne panch processor se mila kar ek multi processor system banaya hai aur yadi hum chahte hain ki uski speed hum एक प्रोसेसर की स्पीड से मल्टीप्लाई फाइव करके उसकी एक्चुअल स्पीड गेन करें तो ये पॉसिबल नहीं है उसका रीज़न सिंपल है कि एक प्रोसेसर के पास एक क्यू होती है जिसके एग्जीक्यूशन वो करता है लोड बैलेंसिंग करते समय हो सकता है कि कोई दूसरा प्रोसेसर जो डैमेज हो गया हो उस केस में वो अपने लोड को किसी दूसरे प्रोसेसर पर बैलेंसिंग करेगा इस केस में एक प्रोसेसर कई सारे जॉब्स के साथ साथ हैंडलिंग करने के साथ साथ वो कई सारे पेरिफेरल डिवाइस को भी मैनेज करता है ओके okay? तो उस अमाउंट में उसे कहीं ना कहीं दूसरे के टास्क को भी हैंडलिंग करनी है इस ओवरहेड के कारण कुछ ना कुछ अमाउंट उसका जो एग्जीक्यूशन का अमाउंट है उसकी जो स्पीड का अमाउंट है वो कहीं ना कहीं लेस होगा तो एक्चुअल एक्सपेक्टेड जितना गेन होगा वो एक्चुअल नहीं मिलेगा आप पांच प्रोसेसर से जितना गेन एक्सपेक्टेड कर रहे थे उतना एक्सपेक्टेड उतना गेन आपको नहीं मिलेगा उससे थोड़ा कम मिलेगा राइट right? क्योंकि उसे उसी टाइमिंग पर कई सारी टास्क हैंडल करनी है प्रोसेसर यदि कुछ लॉस हो जाता है या उस वर्क वर्किंग करना बंद कर देता है उस केस में वो अपनी लोड बैलेंसिंग भी करेगा 
तो वो अपना एक्चुअल थ्रोपुट नहीं दे पाएगा सो so, ऐसा हो सकता है क्योंकि स्पीड अप रेशो अलग अलग प्रोसेसर का अलग अलग होता है और इन बिटवीन एग्जीक्यूशन के बीच में भी कुछ ऐसे सिचुएशन आ सकती है कि उसे लोड बैलेंसिंग करनी पड़ती है तो एक डिसएडवांटेज होता है कि स्पीड अप रेशो एग्जैक्टली exactly उतना नहीं होता है जितने नंबर ऑफ प्रोसेसर के बेस पर आप उसको कैलकुलेट करते हो राइट right? इसी के चलते कि यदि मल्टीपल प्रोसेसिंग हो रही है इसका मतलब है कि मल्टी मल्टीपल प्रोसेसर उस सिस्टम में है तो अननेसेसरी कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी बढ़ ही जाएगी और कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी की हैंडलिंग भी थोड़ा टफ टास्क होता है सो द सेकेंड डिसएडवांटेज इज कॉम्प्लेक्सिटी इन हैंडलिंग मल्टीपल प्रोसेसर इट्स नॉट इजी टास्क राइट दिस इज वॉट द मल्टी प्रोसेसिंग सिस्टम लेट्स हैव लुक टाइम शेयरिंग ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम Now, in time sharing operating system, a timer interrupt is used to multiplex CPU among shop. We have a concept of timer interrupt over here. Let me discuss what is actually the timer. Timer which interrupt. as we decided time interval so suppose we decided that after 10 millisecond the processor must switched from one process to other process this is called time interval okay so which interrupt as we decide decided time interval so whatever the time interval which decided by the user cpu will switched from one process to other process on that time interval okay this is what timer so in time sharing operating system a timer interrupt is used to multiplex cpu among shop we have number of jobs okay so how the time sharing will take place let's have a example suppose we have five different processes each process have its burst time or we can say its execution time right so suppose process p1 P two, P three, P four, and process P five. Process P one have suppose five millisecond burst time. Process P two has suppose ten millisecond. Process P three has suppose six millisecond. Process P four has suppose five millisecond, and process P five has suppose two millisecond. We have five different processes. each process have their own burst time burst time that means i am talking about the execution completion time process p1 required 5 millisecond for complete their execution process p2 required 10 millisecond for their complete execution and so on so somehow we need to allocate cpu wisely to all the process for complete their executions now in order to achieve this task we have to set some time slice right we have to set timer or we can say time slice or we can say time quanta there are so many different terms over here suppose we have decided like 5 millisecond is the time quanta 
so what does it really make sense CPU will be switched after 5 millisecond ok so CPU will be switched after each 5 millisecond so how it will take the execution in the first cycle process p1 allocate cpu cpu allocated to the process p1 for the 5 millisecond then it will remain zero after the end of the execution p1 gets terminated after 5 millisecond the cpu will allocate it to the process p2 it will be executed for the 5 millisecond now 10 minus 5 the process p2 will remain 5 millisecond now it will terminate it oh sorry it will not terminate it it will still in the queue process switched from process p2 to pr process p3 then execute process p3 and it remains the 1 millisecond remaining then again processor switched to process p4 it will again remaining 0 and 0 in the second cycle it will again 0 it become the 0 process p2 will complete their execution in the second cycle process p3 again makes 0 it again 0 it again 0 so there will be two cycle required to the processor for complete entire five processes at the same time right this is actually the time sharing system processor allocated to each and every process for a time quanta and time quanta decided by the policies of operating system so we have taken an example here 5 millisecond is our time quanta processor will be allocated to each and every process for a 5 millisecond and the process execution time will be given here so as per the given time maybe CPU will take one cycle two cycle and number of cycle right this is time sharing now the exactly uh, the advantage of time sharing operating systems are first is interactive computing interactive means user continuously can interact with the operating system or their jobs unlike multi-programming batch system as I already discussed in the last lecture user cannot interact uh, with their jobs they have to uh, allocate it batch jobs uh, not batches batches are created by the expert user have their own jobs and they use uh, the user allocated multiple jobs to the expert I'm talking about the batch operating batch processing system what exactly it is batches are created by the expert with the help of related jobs okay this is again again one kind of multi-programming but you the interaction between user and jobs there were not possible I hope you remember but in the multi-programming system in the time sharing system there is interaction between user and jobs are possible so unlike multi-programming batch systems where errors are corrected offline in time sharing system users can interact with the computer that is the error can be detected while a statement or instruction is being written and can be corrected immediately right that is why these systems are found most suitable for program development and testing because there are interaction there is interaction between user and jobs second is reduces CPU ideal time 
now how it is done cpu utilization and throughput is increased to great extent as the cpu does not have to wait during setup times or during input output operations as in the batch processing system right i hope you remind in the batch processing cpu sometimes it may be ideal it does not have uh, to process something because batch are creating batch are forming at that time so forming of batch forming or creation of batch at the time of cpu will be ideal because they don't have any process into the primary memory right so there is not uh, much more uh, utilization of cpu so that reduces cpu ideal time cpu utilization and throughput is increased in the time sharing system because cpu do not wait for inputting and outputting okay and the third advantage is avoids duplications of softwares several programs are frequently used by many users in time sharing system such programs are kept in a system libra library and can be accessed by any user online the user can save his time or of writing similar programs again and duplicating them right this is the third fourth is due to the time sharing reduces paperwork right to get specific information managers can use online file instead of using a bulky file containing much of unnecessary information so reduces paperwork there is also disadvantage the first disadvantage is disadvantages are of time sharing system the first is security so since many users use a time sharing system simultaneously security methods such as password protection must be applied to protect the programs and the data of users from illegal access so if we allow multi uh user environment because time sharing is a concept where user can access the memory hardware devices okay and other resources also so somehow we need to maintain the security this is become the disadvantage we have to strictly uh, protect to the memory and protect to the tds part of process security will be major concern in that case so user can access illegal access you uh, can user can access the tds part of the process illegally right sorry second is short memory short memory the main memory is not so large to accommodate the programs of all users so suppose we have less primary memory so it will not accommodate to all the programs of the users right so at a particular instance only the active program and some ready programs are presenting main memory the rest of program will be swept out from main memory to hard disk only we put the active program active process into the primary memory later on programs will uh, which enter into wait state are swept to disk and uh, new ready program are brought into the main memory so maybe due to the short memory there may be problems occur in which we need to perform the swap in and swap out process more than one time the so tracing 
may be occurs in that case phrasing is a term here which comes uh, due to the short memory because uh, more than one times number of times if we moved uh, processes pages uh, from primary memory to hard disk this become the less utilization of the cpu right in that case the problem occurs known as tracing fourth is overhead a large amount of cpu time is wasted in switching from user to user and sweeping program in and out of course there is concept of time sharing so every process must be uh, cpu must be allocated to each and every process for a certain time limit so unnecessary we need to sweep out uh, switched to a cpu from one process to other process so that is very overhead okay as the number of users in the system increases suppose there is number of users overhead also increases resulting poor performance or poor response okay this is actually overhead will be take place right so that was the time sharing operating system now the last is real time operating system so let's have a look what exactly the real time operating system is what the real time system is real time operating system is a special purpose operating system it is used when rigid rigid time requirement have been placed on the operation of processor or data flow it is used as control device in a dedicated system right a real time system as has well defined fixed time constraints processing must be done within defined constraint otherwise system will fail that's that is very important point of the operating system a real time operating system has well defined fixed time constraints processing must be done within defined constraints otherwise system will fail so sometime what kind of execution or what kind of response we want we get quick response from the system right we give the input at the same time we desiring the output correct output correct result within time constraint it is probably very major concern in some cases right in that case the real time operating system used right a primary objective of the real time system is to provide quick event response time and thus meet the scheduling deadlines user convenience and resource utilization are of the secondary concern to the real time system designer right the primary let me clear the primary objectives of real time operating system is to provide quick event response time right and thus meet the scheduling deadline
and thus meet the scheduling deadlines user convenience and resource utilization are of secondary concern of real time operating system right so real time operating system that if any case if any time user wants quick response within time constraints defined time constraint or defined deadline then that kind of operating system is called real time operating system it may be used in the some emergencies in medical science in militaries right in research work these are some working area where the response will be very quick otherwise system will fail so the primary objective of a real time operating system is very clear to provide quick event response time and thus meet the scheduling deadline it has to be obtain the result within the constraints of time user convenience and resource utilization this is not a major concern of the real time system but of course it is become the secondary concern of real time of operating system but the major concern and the first priority is response should be very quick and within the time all right there is advantage of uh, real time operating systems advantages of real time operating system is the real time system operate in multi programming and multi processing environment which increases both availability and reliability of the system so because it performing it perform into the multi programming environment so it increases increases both availability and reliability of systems that is the first advantage of real time operating system second advantage these systems are interactive and usually involve more than one user of the computer i as, as i just told you it works in multi user environment so these systems are interactive and usually involve more than one users of the computer however the only requirement is speed as low of few second can be critical it can work in multi user environment so speed as low of few second can be very critical okay we cannot wait for a few second there is again there is some disadvantage of real time operating systems due to defined time constraints hardware is expensive so due to defined time constraints we have to configure those hardware which perform like that so ultimately it is very expensive this kind of system is very expensive the hardware is expensive second is these systems are duplicated so that in event to even in event of uh, breakdown backup facilities is immediately available for the continuous operation of the system so recovery is very difficult in that case 
recovery is very tough right that is the disadvantage of real time operating system right thank you